wait is over. Brookline Strong is live now. Martha Huntley, welcome to Brookline Strong, The Heartbeat Sessions. We are all here to honor and to celebrate our heroic essential workers that have been here and continue to be here while we fight through COVID-19. We are also here to honor everyone peacefully working towards social and racial justice. These are essential times for us to do the hard work of listening and the necessary work of doing. I am so grateful to all of the participants tonight. We have beautiful performances and tributes to share. I want you to know that you can share comments in the comments section on social media. We would love your thoughtful messages. I'd like to thank Phil Schroeder for being so incredibly helpful in the production, editing, everything with this event. And I'd like to thank Harvey Brofman, Deb Heffen, and Faith Michaels for immeasurable support, and I'd like to thank my family. I'd like us to take a second to think about all of the families that have been most hard hit economically by COVID-19. The Brookline Community Foundation has created the Safety Net Fund for donations to help those families. Before you settle in, I would like to introduce you to our Brookline native and incomparable Sophie Morgenstern. Have a great evening and thank you for being here. Thank you, Martha. I'm Sophie Morgenstern, Lawrence School and BHS alum, and I'll be your host this evening. Tonight's program, organized by Brookline Strom, is to benefit the Brookline Community Foundation Safety Net Fund. With the many heartfelt messages and performances sent in by Friends of Brookline, tonight we honor our essential workers during this pandemic, as well as the continued fight for racial justice in our community and beyond. Let's start things off with a performance from Art Barn. Like this brief day, my light is nearly gone. But through the night, my children, you will go on. You will know heartache, prayers that don't work, and times of bitter circumstances. But I Children. 
This next section is for kids and family. Starting us off is Grammy Award-winning storyteller, Bill Harley. Hey, Brookline families, this is Bill Harley. I'm recording this for you on Sunday, June 7th in support of the Brookline Community Foundation, a safety net fund to support those Brookline families most impacted by the COVID crisis. Any donation you make today will go directly to the safety net fund. So I hope you'll think about doing that. In order to encourage you to do that, I'm going to sing a couple songs for you that I have written. All right, and I hope you enjoy them. And then you make a donation. Dad said, take a walk around the block. Put on your shoes and socks, take a walk around the block. You're driving me crazy and it's got to stop. Get outside and take a walk around the block. I walked out the door, I walked down the street. I said, how to do to everybody I meet? I got home about half past noon. My dad said, you're back too soon. Hi, Dad. How'd you get back so fast? I ran, I said. Take a walk around the block. Oh, okay. My dad said, take a walk around the town. Quit hanging around. Take a walk around the town. You're driving me crazy with your running around. Get outside and take a walk around the town. I walk by the stores. I walk by the school. By the post office in a swimming pool. I got home about half past one. My dad said, you can't be done. I'm back. Wait a minute. What? Did you run, um, just once? When was that? Um, the whole time? <laughs> My dad said, take a walk around the land. Man, oh man, take a walk around the land. You're driving me crazy and I can't stand it. Get outside and take a walk around the land. I walked to the mountains, I walked to the shore. I walked through the desert, I walked a little more. I got home about half past two. My dad said, you can't be through, I'm back. You did not walk around the land. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. 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 No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> My dad said, take a walk around the earth. Things are getting worse, take a walk around the earth. You're driving me crazy and my head hurts. Get outside and take a walk around the earth. I walk through Asia and Europe too. From Tucum Care to Timbuktu. I got home about half past three. My dad said, no, that cannot be. I'm back. You did not walk around the earth. Yes, I did that. The elephants were great. Okay, that's enough of that. So are the anacondas. That's enough. So are the penguins. That's enough. So are the polar bears, that's enough. So is Mount Everest. <laughs> My dad said, take a walk around the moon. Don't come back soon, take a walk around the moon. You're driving me crazy, crazy as a loon. Get outside and take a walk around the moon. I walked past the clouds, I walked by the sky. I sat on moon, I watched Earth rise. I got home about half past four. My dad said, what are you here for? I'm back. You did not walk around the moon. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. It's impossible. No, it's not, Dad. Other people have been around the moon, not some kid in sneakers. It's impossible. No, Dad, it is not impossible because it's possible. What? Yeah, it's possible. If you can do it, it's possible. If you can't do it, it's impossible. And I did it, so it's possible, not impossible. And something can't be possible and possible at the same time. That would be impossible, so it's possible and not impossible. <sighs> Dad, what? Could I have a cookie? My dad said, take a walk through space. Get out of my face and take a walk through space. You're driving me crazy, you run around the place. Get outside and take a walk through space. I walk by Mercury, walk by Mars. I walk by comets, I walk by stars. I got home about half past 10. My dad said, where have you been? Well, Dad, I was in outer space. I know, but what took you so long? Well, don't be ridiculous, Dad. You can't go to outer space and come back in an hour. That would be impossible. Yeah, okay. Dad, what? 
Can I have a cookie now? No, it's really late. It's bedtime. No, Dad, it's not bedtime. It's cookie time. No, it's late. It's bedtime. No, Dad, it's cookie time. It's bedtime. No, it's impossible. It cannot be bedtime. Why not? Because we haven't had cookie time yet. And you can't have cookie time after bedtime because you'd be asleep, so you couldn't eat the cookie. So it's impossible to have cookie time after bedtime. You have bedtime after cookie time, cookie time before bedtime. Eat the cookie, then you go to bed. <sighs> Can I have a cookie? Take the cookie. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do one more song for you. Uh, and this is a song I, I wrote a couple years ago, but it feels very um, apropos right now. Actually, it's always apropos. Um, it's based on a, a line from uh, Ram Dass, uh, Richard Alpert, originally in uh, Ram Dass, and he died a couple years ago, or last year, I guess. Um, but we had this line on our refrigerator for a while, and I always loved it, and I finally wrote a song. Uh, it says, uh, we're all just walking each other's home. We're all just walking each other home. And uh, I think about what we're going through today, uh, all the changes, the things that we could not have imagined, and people uh, speaking up and wanting to make a more s a safer and a more just world. Uh, and I'm reminded of this song that uh, at the heart of all these changes we're going through, uh, I hope that there's some kind of kindness and that, that we keep that kindness in our hearts and how we speak to each other. And uh, this song is uh, for all of you, all of us, going through these changes together that we could not have imagined only a year ago. thinking that there's something you owe me We're all walking each other home If you think I'm keeping score then you don't know me We're all walking each other home I know you're blue I've been there too don't go thinking that you're all alone We're all walking each other home You know we're all walking each other home When the night is dark and the road is long other home when you're thinking that you're not that strong we're all walking each other home when you lose heart I'll take your part and when your life is sinking like a stone we're all walking other home, but I'll walk in each other home. When you're thinking that all your dreams have died, remember that someone at your side. stumble and we lose our ways we're all walking each other home and when we're dreaming of some brighter days here we are we're all walking each other home when you can't stand reach out your hand Deep inside heaven, we always know we're all walking each other home. You know we're, we're all walking each other home. When you can't stand, just reach out your hand. And when you lose heart, 
Don't you know I'll take you part Because we're all walking each other home. Take care of each other, will you? I'll see you around. Thanks, Bill. Next up is Brookline's own Avery Hart, 7th grader at Pierce School. A neighborhood that sings together, stays together. Next up, we have the Greeks Road Neighbors with a song, followed by Veer Peters with an international shout out. Then the Feldman kids have a dance. Hello, Greeks Park. Happy Sunday. Uh, we've got a little bit of parting in the clouds for this special song for tonight. We'll be doing Somewhere Over the Rainbow.
Hey Brooklyn, I loved living in your neighborhood last year in summer. Now I'm back in Germany and here we are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and fighting for racial justice as well. We will get through this. Stay healthy and stay strong, everyone. Be safe and lots of love from Germany. Hi, liebe Leute in Brooklyn. Ich habe letztes Jahr im Sommer bei euch in der Nachbarschaft gewohnt und es war wunderbar. Jetzt bin ich zurück in Deutschland und auch hier kämpfen wir gegen die Covid-19-Pandemie und gegen Diskriminierung. Wir schaffen das. Bleibt gesund, bleibt stark und viele liebe Grüße aus Deutschland. Brooklyn Strong. Justin Feldman. I'm Indy Feldman. And I'm Callie Feldman. We would like to thank all the essential workers for keeping us safe during COVID. We would also like to thank everyone who's peacefully advancing racial justice. My sisters are going to perform the Dance of Gratitude. Nice job, Feldman family. Our next guest performs an original piece. Here's Antonia Duffield from Pierce School. Hello, my name is Antonia Duffield. Today I will be performing a song I wrote called Part of Our Lives. It is dedicated to all the first responders who are risking their lives to save others. Thank you. Inspires me. 
What a nice tune. Thank you, Antonia. Right now, I'd like to stop and give a shout out to the class of 2020. This includes Brookline eighth graders, high schoolers, and college students alike. Congrats to you all. Although many of your ceremonies could not take place in person, a great job was done making the most of them. Here's some highlights from BHS's socially distant graduation. Hello, Brookline. I'm Joe Kennedy. I just wanted to reach out and say thank you for doing all of this. We are facing some incredibly challenging times in our country. A pandemic that continues to take lives in Massachusetts. An economy that is desperately trying to restart. And a needed reckoning over this country's legacy of racism and oppression. It's now playing out in our streets. We are angry. We are anxious. And we are grieving. But this moment will not break us. It will define us. If each of us stands up and does our part to build something better for our future. That's why I want to thank all of our frontline workers and all of our essential workers. Over the last few months, you've put your own lives at risk to keep us safe and to keep our economy running. From our doctors and nurses to our first responders, to our service industry workers and delivery drivers, thank you. I want to thank every person that's taken to the streets to fight for racial justice in the wake of George Floyd's murder. We need to be more than allies in this moment. We need to be activists for a system that will finally make good on the words that Black Lives Matter. The work ahead for this country is the work of a generation. It will take all of us together. We will get through it together. And we will build something better together. Thank you all. Stay Brookline strong. pretty scary and overwhelming so I, I know that everyone everyone is trying to follow the bouncing the bouncing ball of life to know what's happening but maybe also take take some brain breaks from eating so much news it's not it's not good for your ticker or or your anxieties to listen to the same stories over and over and over those the the 24 hour news stations they're they're like crack crack cocaine or M&Ms for the humans, okay? Okay, because it's, it's, it can be habit-forming and it's purposely built to bombard your senses and train you to think that you can't miss anything. But it's okay to miss a little bit, except blueberries under the kitchen counter, okay? Those 24-hour news stations, they're programmed to program you and keep you gluing to it, okay? So even I, I can see that and I'm partly blind, okay? They do tricks to make the adrenaline build up and as your little brains race all around your screen trying to keep up, you're, you're acting like cats that are chasing a laser pointer. It's like circuit training for your senses, except you, you have to take a little bit of brain, you have to take a little bit of break from the brain burpees and let some things just be absorbed, okay? You don't, you don't even realize it's happening, but as four-leggeds, we watch you from our vantage point on the sofa, okay? It's, it starts really innocently. You, you're just watching and listening to the big talking head on the screen, blah, blah, blah. Then, oh, 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 what's in the little moving picture box up there in the corner? And, and so your eyeballs, they start trying to figure out what's playing in that little window. But your ears, the ears are still hearing the blah, blah, blah from the giant talking head. 
So unconsciously, you're playing a cerebral game of connect the dots. Wait, wait, what's that headline sliding across the bottom of the screen? What did that say? Darn, I missed it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll wait. It's going to come back. It always comes back. Oh, stock tickers. Look at them jump around like a kangaroo with a Fitbit. Green, red, red, green, damn. All the, all the dollar signs are flying through the space-time continuum of your mind. Uh-oh, there goes my vacation. Ooh, wait, here comes my new fridge and stove. Oh, uh, I'm never going to retire. Ha, I'm retiring early. Just stop. I missed that ticker slider again. Wait, wait, what did the big talking head just say? Oh, oh, look, look, the sun is coming out tomorrow. Nice. Oh, no, rain on Friday. Another little window on the world pops up. Where's that? Who are those people? Oh, the Dow is down. Damn, I missed the ticker again. Oh, oh, look, look. Tonight, tonight they're going to have an in-depth report on the same thing that they're talking about right now. In-depth is so much better than surface depth. Oh, oh, the giant talking head. It just changed. Jeez, who picked his tie? Darn, I missed that ticker again. Oh, the Dow is up. On and on. It's not good. Your brain is doing burpees and you need to stop for a while. You need to do some snore meditations. You need to have a snack. You need to go out and sniff the air a little bit and maybe put some toes on the grass, okay? So the world, you need to do a little bit of slowing it down for yourself, okay? Stay safe, everybody. Breathe. Well, that's one kind of self-care. Joining us now is someone who really knows a thing or two about taking care of yourself in quarantine. Here's Brookline's Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Swanee Jett. Hello, Brookline residents. First and foremost, I want to thank you for wearing a mask. You have saved many people's lives, and also you have protected yourself. As we go through the phases of reopening, it is paramount and essential that you continue safe distancing and wearing a mask. Remember, by wearing one, you save not only yourself, but you may save somebody else's life. Thank you, and congratulations to you. Hi, it's Noe from Matt Murphy's. Uh, we miss you all so much, and we hope that everyone's doing great, and we can't wait for you to come back again soon. Um, thank you for everyone who's supported us doing takeout. It's so great to see all your faces. And thank you for all the frontline workers for keeping us safe. And here we have a demonstration of a blackberry smash for you. Hi. Take care. Okay, we have our ingredients here. Gin, tonic, some lime, blackberries, and mix of herbs, and a shaker. And I made these cute little ice cubes with rose petals and fruit. That's optional. So, this is a serving just for one. This is a little shaker, but I'll give you uh, an idea here. Actually, I realized I should probably measure for people who don't make cocktails every day. Um, so, I would say if you're using a measure, which I don't have at home, oddly enough, um, put three or four ounces for COVID. If we're gonna need it. So, gin there. And then squeeze your limes in. Lovely. And the blackberries and the herbs. Any herbs are fine. I like to use a mix. I have mint on my patio. There we are. And then, oddly enough, I put a little pepper. Um, gin has a ton of botanicals and spices in it, so I think pepper goes lovely. All right. Give it a really good shake. Okay. And then you can decide whether to strain it out or dump the whole thing in, depending what you like, if you like all the chunky bits in there or you don't. I will strain it out just for a better look. Okay. And really get it, get everything out of the bottom. Okay. 
and then a splash of tonic just so it's not too boozy or none if you want it to be too boozy and a little garnish and a little pepper on the top and that's a lovely quarantine blackberry smash for you cheers i hope everyone's doing great and we can't wait to see you soon our next guest has great info about beating loneliness while staying at home and social distancing. Here's Harvard professor and social scientist, Arthur Brooks. Hi friends, I'm Arthur Brooks. I'm a professor of the practice of public leadership at the Harvard Kennedy School and a senior fellow at the Harvard Business School. But most importantly, I'm one of your neighbors in Brookline, Massachusetts, a beautiful place that we all love living. We're all stuck during this coronavirus lockdown and we're looking for ways to make our lives better. So I want to give you a little bit of advice, something that I do for a living. I teach a class at the Harvard Business School on happiness. And so I want to give you one piece of advice that you might be able to use that I teach my students about. A lot of people are telling me that they're suffering from loneliness. I mean, maybe they're quarantining with somebody they love, but they're not seeing as many people and it, it's kind of taxing. It's psychologically difficult. I, I get that. If you're feeling uncomfortable because of loneliness, because of your lack of contact with enough people, what's going on is that you have a problem, which is a lack of a, a neurotransmitter in your brain called oxytocin. Oxytocin is produced by the human brain to bond us to one another, and it's an elixir of happiness. It's really important. If you don't get enough of it, you don't feel good, and that's what a lot of people are feeling. They say, I feel almost physically uncomfortable from this loneliness. That's what's going on. How do you get more oxytocin? The answer is the brain produces it in response to eye contact and touch. You're not getting enough of those two things, even if you're quarantining with a friend or a loved one. <laughs> Why? Because you react to the, that person that you live with the same way you always have, but you don't have enough contact with enough other people. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few steps of advice that can make this better. Number one, stay off social media. Now, I know, if you feel like you want more contact, you're going to go to social media and contact all the people that you typically talk to on social media. The problem is, no oxytocin, because there's no eye contact and there's no touch. Instead, use technologies where you have eye contact, like FaceTime, like Zoom, like Skype. It will make you feel a lot better. As a matter of fact, I recommend that you therapeutically use those technologies for between one and two hours a day. You'll feel a lot happier off social media, on face-to-face -face technologies. That's number one. Number two is more touch. If you are lucky enough to be quarantining with another person, uh, you need to touch that person more. There's a guy that I do work with in California, and he, he, he's the world's leading expert on blood oxytocin levels. He says that oxytocin is max at its maximum level when you hug somebody for 22 seconds. Mm, you know what that means? That means somebody you're quarantining with needs and you need a 22 second hug every two hours. Okay? That's the prescription for you. I know it's going to feel weird at first, but you're going to like it a lot. Trust me. Now, the other thing, is, by the way, if you're quarantining by yourself but you've got a pet, there's great research that shows that when you pet your dog and look him in the eyes, you get oxytocin and so does your dog. <laughs> we were evolved in parallel. It's one of the great miracles. So in other words, it doesn't even have to be a person, but you need more eye contact and you need more touch. Those are the two things that you really need to do while staying off the technology that actually makes things worse. I hope this is helpful. I hope that you stay happy. I hope that you stay healthy. I hope to see you at the supermarket. We'll make eye contact with each other here in Brookline if we do. Special shout out today to all the people who are keeping us safe and healthy, our healthcare workers. There's so many of them who are neighbors here in Brookline. And I'm hoping that your life gets better. We learn some good practices. And who knows, maybe we can come out of our lockdown better than we went in. See you around town. Next up, we have some simple yoga moves from our friends at Innerspace. Namaste. Hi, this is Ellie Dunford. I'm the owner of Inner Space. We've been on Station Street for about 18 years. We're right down the street from the Puppet Theater, next door to Feet of Clay. And I also used to be the owner of Cuckoo Cafe. You may know me that way. Now, in the old days, I used to feed you lots of delicious treats, coffee, scones, and all that. I can't do that anymore. But I can serve up some delicious yoga snacks for you. I have some wonderful teachers that teach at Inner Space for so long. 
and we have classes that we offer online. It's been difficult times for all of us. Half of our business is gone because we used to have lots of parties here. Thousands of people over the years have come and had big celebrations, bar mitzvahs, weddings, birthday parties, all sorts of things. We had kids yoga and kids music. All of that is kind of on hold right now. However, we do have yoga. And yoga is going to get us all through this. I'd like a big shout out right now for our essential workers and for Martha for creating this wonderful vessel in which to put all of our gratitude, to pour out our hearts for our essential workers. And just like on Friday nights, when we bang all the pots and pans, this is for you guys, essential workers. I'd love to offer you all free yoga class. So from me to you and our little lady here, we'd like to send our gratitude and love. And next, I would like to introduce you to our fabulous yoga instructor, Annie Hoffman, who's been teaching for decades. Um, she's going to offer up some wonderful yoga snacks that's good for anybody. So enjoy the treat and get through this safe. We love you. So if you feel like standing up, the first yoga snack is going to be an energizer. So simply taking your arms from your sides, overhead, and back out to the sides. Say 10 times, something like that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, pressing arms out to the side and down. Inhale to lift. Exhale to spread. So we get that vertical lift and that horizontal expansion. Two more like that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to spread. Inhale, arms up. And exhale to spread. So that's a mood elevator. It builds optimism. Now, for those of you feeling tension in the shoulders and neck, very common place to hold our tension, I'm taking shoulders up and back. Forward, up and back. Greasing the joints. Greasing the joints. Then you might add your elbows. Flapping your arms a bit like wings. Spreading the arms wide. As long as you have six feet between you and your next person here, why not take up space? I just went black. So spreading, spreading. Circling, circling. Mm -hmm. Two more like that. Nice. Next, if you're feeling a little sluggish and need help digesting, just take a chair, any chair, sitting in your chair. Walk your feet around to one side, turning to the back of the chair, and turn more. Let your head be a passenger on the spine so the head is not initiating. Turning with my torso and then using my arms to help and letting the head go for a ride. When you think of the organs of digestion, they're like sponges. So the way you squeeze the sponge to refresh, twists are helpful with digestion. And finally, to calm the mind, to cool the brain, I'm gonna take my knees wide and from the chair, I'm doing a forward bend. Pretty sure most of you will be able to bring your hands onto the floor and then release the head and let the head hang. This is lovely for the neck to let go, for the brain to have that cooling feeling. And you can rest there even for three, four breaths will be helpful. When you come up, come up slowly and just see how is it now. So we have energizing snacks, we have rolling the shoulders, we have twisting for digestion, and then forward bend 
inversion for calming. So may your body be at peace. May you practice self-care and peace and blessings internally and externally. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Brookline Strong stands in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter and Wake Up Brookline protests. Though we have a long ways to go, our community and nation are slowly starting to change for the better. Here's what's been happening on the streets of Brookline. Coming up is a performance by former Lauren's mom. Sending her love from her home in the Netherlands, this is Livia's mom, a.k.a. Louise Alexander Koopman. Hi, I'm Louise Alexander Koopman, and I'm honored to contribute to these heartbeat sessions, as my heart beats for Brookline strongly still, even though we moved away a few years ago to the Netherlands. My family and I lived in Brookline for many years. Kids went through the schools there, and... Every day we're grateful to have experienced living in such a beautiful town with top-notch education where great values are taught in the schools, life-saving healthcare, a vibrant creative arts and music scene, but above all, a very supportive, respectful, friendly and strong community of friends that we very much miss. Every day I think of Brookline and my thoughts, especially during these trying times, are often on your side of the ocean. We're weathering the same storm, even though we might be in different boats, all of us. So today I wanted to sing a song for Brookline because I've never really left. My wonderful friend and pianist, Doug Hammer, will play for me from just up north of Brookline. to get away from you to leave the past behind me I went on trains and boats and planes where love could never find me but oh my dear however far away I flew no matter where I traveled to I never
These Brookline singer-songwriter brothers have been making some great music. Here are BHS alums, Nikki and Alex Gersten. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Gersten. I'm Nikki Gersten. Uh, and we are Brookline, born and raised residents coming to you live from our parents' garage. Um, we wanted to say thank you to the Brookline Community Foundation and all uh, frontline hospital and health workers and essential workers. Uh, this one's for you. Next, we have master songwriter Chris Smither. Take it away, Chris. Hey, I'm Chris Smither, and I'm sending this song out to the Brookline Essential Workers. Any donations made to the uh, Brookline Safety Net Fund are appreciated. It's been set up to help any of your Brookline neighbors who may be in financial need due to COVID-19. <laughs> Oh, 
Up next, see how a few locals pivoted their businesses into manufacturing life-saving PPE. As COVID-19 began to spread, a maker movement began to spread, connecting designers, engineers, and medical workers all over the world through thousands of Facebook groups, Slack channels, and forums, determining how they can best use their skills to fight the virus. Within the global discussion, local makers joined forces to focus on needs, forming the Boston Makers. As a group, we put our brains, hearts, and 3D printers together, talked to local healthcare workers and suppliers, determined our makerspace's capacity for manufacturing, and made a game plan. Lowell Makes began prototyping 3D printed respirators, working with medical experts at MGH to test filtering and breathability. With the design verified, they began printing, gathering volunteers to help them assemble and distribute the respirators to local hospitals. Fab at CIC researched the best cloth mask designs and landed on the Olson mask developed by nurses at Unity Point Health in Iowa. They rallied the sewing community and together they sewed over 4,000 cloth masks. Boston makers and several other maker spaces jumped on board with Fab at CIC and helped produce fabric masks as well. So too did the South End Technology Center, who started the PPE for People campaign providing masks to some of the most vulnerable people in our community, such as the homeless, those in assisted living facilities, and essential workers. Artists Asylum put an immense amount of energy into manufacturing PPE. They formed groups to work on each type of PPE, from face shields, to face masks, to full body suits and even gloves. After their initial prototyping, they recruited volunteers to begin production of their most promising products, face shields and suits. We at the Makery began designing and prototyping face shields and masks and ultimately determined that we would be best suited as a hub for assembly and distribution. We set out to form partnerships so that we could begin bringing PPE parts together and getting them in the hands of those who need them most. Our first major partners were Micah Nelson and Susan Kistler, who reached out to connect us to their organization, Masks for Docs. They were working to connect individual makers who could 3D print PPE in their shops or homes to central locations for assembly and distribution. We would become the primary central location in Massachusetts. Soon after, we met Faith Michaels, an active member of the Brookline community, Faith took on the role of liaison and organizer between those making PPE and those who needed it. She not only made connections, she was there to solve any problem that got in the way of putting PPE in the hands of those in need. Lastly, after being connected through Faith, we worked hand in hand with Jeremy Katz, founder of JK Automotive Designs. He and his partners in the automotive industry had already begun a massive effort to manufacture tens of thousands of face shields and needed a place for assembly and distribution. Through the assembly lines we set up, the Makery, the Brookline Teen Center, and CrossFit Coolidge Corner we continue to serve the community, but in a new way. The only remaining step was recruiting a team of volunteers to begin assembling. With the generosity of the Brookline community, we were soon joined by hundreds of people, from librarians to Brookline High students, to family members of medical workers, to people who simply heard about our efforts and wanted to help. Thanks to these incredible volunteers, we assembled 32,000 face shields in one month. And donated them to over 100 hospitals, shelters, first responders, and essential local businesses. The effort has been proof of the incredible strength and generosity of the Brookline community. 
And we hope that this strength will lead us towards a future of positive change on all fronts. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts to all of our volunteers. A special thanks to Faith Michaels, Jeremy Katz, and all of the Boston makers who made this possible. Returning to his Brookline roots, here's Chef Christopher Kimball. Hi, this is Christopher Kimball. As you know, I worked in uh, Brookline Village for, I guess, over 20 years. I miss it. Uh, it's, it's a lovely, lovely place to be and to work. Uh, I also want to thank uh, those of you who have worked in hospitals, friends of ours work at Mass General, for example, uh, putting your own uh, health and life at risk to help the rest of us. Uh, we're just enormously grateful that you showed up uh, every day. I just want to say thank you. Uh, this is a recipe uh, from the Middle East called Mahudra. Uh, just a few basic pantry staples you can make in weeknights uh, or on weekends. It's one of my favorites. Uh, just a great thing to know and you actually don't need a recipe. You know, after 40, 50 years of cooking, I finally started to understand some of the underlying uh, basics and recipes. I call them master recipes. And let me give you an example. Years ago, I was chatting with Julia Child about custards, uh, creme caramel, for example. And she said, oh yeah, that's you know a cup of dairy with two eggs. And I started looking at all my recipes for custards, like pumpkin pies and custard. And it's a cup of dairy for two eggs. So she understood that underneath all these recipes that seem so different, there is a formula. So today, I want to give you a very similar formula that is one that's going to be incredibly helpful to you. You can cook this recipe anytime you want out of standard pantry ingredients, and all you need to know are three numbers. But before we get to that, a little bit about how I discovered this recipe. It's called Mahudra. Uh, it's lentils and rice with caramelized onions. And I was visiting with a guy called Hussein Hadid. He's co-owner of the Umi restaurant in Beirut. And he took me up to his apartment, which had a wonderful view of the city. And he made lentils and rice with caramelized onions. And he had two kids, nine or 10 years old, a boy and a girl, and it was one of their favorite foods. He said it was comfort food, but for me, it's everyday food. It's absolutely delicious. Now, Beirut is an interesting place. Um, you see Kentucky Fried Chicken signs, you see Fred Astaire dance studio signs, believe it or not. It has worse traffic than LA, it's absolutely unbelievable. But it's gorgeous, it has flowing hills that come right down to the Mediterranean. Uh, it was actually the Garden of the Middle East. Uh, it's still a little war torn, you can see bullet holes in some of the buildings, there are police checkpoints. Uh, but the people are fabulous and the food is just absolutely extraordinary. So how do you make Mahudra? Well you start with the lentils. Now, I have a problem with lentils. Now there's red lentils and yellow lentils, of course, and when you cook them, they turn into mush, and that's they're great for soups or dal or whatever. They're French uh, lentils de puy, which are very small, very dark green, and those are harder. They never get fully soft, and you don't want those. In between are what they call brown lentils or green lentils, and I defy you to go to the supermarket and tell the difference. The brown ones look a little green, and the green ones look a little brown. They're larger than lentil de puy and they're fine. So you can use either for this recipe. So uh, here are the numbers. Five cups of water, one cup of lentils, one cup of rice. Put the water in a large pot, uh, add a tablespoon of kosher salt, coarse salt. Uh, you can also add spices here, a couple teaspoons of ground cumin, maybe a half teaspoon of ground allspice or coriander. Uh, throw in a few smashed garlic cloves if you like, and bring that to a simmer. Add the lentils and cook about 10 minutes. They should not be fully cooked. They should still be a little chewy in the center, but the outside is starting to get soft. Add the rice, the cup of rice, usually basmati. In this case, I use jasmine. That's what I happen to have around. Basmati is probably a better choice. It'll hold its toothsomeness a little bit better. Cook it 20 to 25 minutes, and you want the top on uh, in a very slow simmer, like you would cook rice. Uh, when the liquid is absorbed, take it off the heat. Uh, take a kitchen towel, fold it, put it over the top, make sure it's not hanging down to the burner, uh, and put the top on and let it sit 10 minutes. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you caramelize your onions. Um, make as many onions as you have. There's no point in doing a small batch of this. I use six or seven small to medium onions. About a third of a cup of olive oil or any cooking oil is fine. Um, I like to caramelize onions in the low to medium. I keep it on the low side so they don't burn. Uh, it'll take you about half an hour or so. Get them nice and caramelized. Uh, put them on a towel-lined plate, sprinkle some salt on top, and now you're ready to go. 
The rice and lentils are fully cooked. Take them out, serve them, put the caramelized onions on top. Uh, some chopped scallions or chives are nice. Uh, you can also add a little bit of yogurt. Now for variations, you could start the recipe by sauteing the lentils with some onion uh, or garlic if you like, sort of like a peel off a little bit of oil. But it's a very simple recipe. It's, again, it's got three measurements. Five cups of water, one cup of lentils, brown or green, and one cup of rice. And in under an hour, you have an absolutely fabulous meal, and it's all from your pantry. Hi everyone, I'm Raymond from Lebanon, and I spent last September in Brookline rotating at the Brigham and Women's. I'm back in my country now, and we're also fighting uh, the COVID-19 crisis. And uh, we are also uh, seeking racial justice and all kinds of social justice. So we're with you till the end. Okay, keep fighting. Inshallah, كل شيء بيكون منيح ومن خلص من كورونا وبتتحقق العدالة الاجتماعية. Okay, love you, Brookline. It's me, Pluto, and I'm going to tell you six jokes in 60 seconds. What do you call a dinosaur that's sleeping? A dinosaur? <laughs> okay, okay. What did Batman say to Robin before they got in the car? Robin, get in the car. <laughs> okay, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Tentacles. <laughs> get it? Ten tickles. Okay, okay, okay. What do you call a Frenchman who wears sandals? Philippe Flop. <laughs> okay, what do you call a hippie's wife? A Mississippi. <laughs> okay, last one, last one. What do you call a magic dog? A labracadabrador. Go tell your friends six jokes in 60 seconds because God knows you have the time. Okay, bye. Around the world, she's known as Aunt Lydia in The Handmaid's Tale. But here in Brookline, we know her as Anne. Give a welcome to Emmy Award winning actress Anne Dowd. Good evening. My name is Anne Dowd. I was raised in Massachusetts. My sister lives in Brookline. I would love to send to you my sincere thanks for your profound service and goodness to those in need during this very difficult time. It takes so much courage to do what you're doing. I, I don't even know what it's like, but I do know how deeply I am grateful to you. My prayers and my wishes for the very best for all of you and your families. With love and thanks, Anne. Thanks, Anne. Up next, we have a performance from a fellow BHS and Voices Boston alum. He's graced the stage of Broadway in Hamilton. Here's Nick Walker. What up, y'all? Uh, Nick Walker here, BHS class of 06. Got him old. Um, I'm honored to submit something for this wonderful, wonderful event. Um, uh, I wanted to, from the bottom of my heart, express thanks and love to everyone who's been on the front lines of this thing um, since day one and really keeping the rest of us safe. And, uh, you know, I know that it's a really hard time and a time of um, just a lot of uncertainty, but uh, I think that this is definitely a time for, for dreams and for just uh, still believing in the things that, that make you happy and give you joy. And so the, the song that I'm gonna share with you today is, is one of my favorite songs about that very thing. So I just push play on this thing and we'll get started. One song, glory, one song before I go, glory, one song to leave behind, find one song, one last refrain, glory from the pretty boy front man, who 
wasted opportunity. One song, he had the world at his feet. Glory in the eyes of a young girl. A young girl. Find glory beyond the cheap colored lights. One song before the sun sets. Glory on another empty life. Time flies, time dies. Glory. One blaze of glory. One blaze of Glory in the song that rings true truth like a blazing fire, an eternal flame. Find one song, a song about love, glory from the soul of a young man, a young man. Find the one song before the virus takes hold Glory like a sunset One song to redeem this empty life Time flies And then no need to endure anymore Time dies Hi, my name is Betsy Frauenthal. I'm the Executive Director of Brookline Music School. On behalf of our board, staff, and faculty, I share our gratitude to the people of Brookline who are dedicated to serving others and making a difference. We believe in the power of music to guide us through these challenging times. Enjoy the performance.
I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo, offering my deepest thanks to all of the government employees who have been processing unemployment claims, assisting with landlord-tenant problems, helping small businesses expedite loan applications and permitting, connecting people with testing and treatment, and doing so many other things to help people make it through such an incredibly difficult time in their lives. Hi, I'm Sophia Chang from Guatemala, and I'm a doctor. I love living in Brookline while I'm teaching at Boston Children's Hospital. I'm in Guatemala City, and we're all dealing with COVID-19 and seeking racial justice. Hola, soy Sofía Chang, soy de Guatemala y soy médico. Me encantó vivir en Brookline durante mi rotación en el Hospital de Niños de Boston. Estoy en Guatemala y estamos también luchando en contra del coronavirus y buscando justicia racial.
Hi everyone, I'm Frank Steinfield, Interim CEO of the Brookline Community Foundation. And we're really thrilled to be a part of Brookline Strong. And I want to thank everyone who has worked hard over the past three months of the pandemic to keep Brookline safe, healthy, and operating the key services we all depend on. Here at BCF, we focused on building up the safety net to provide frontline relief to any community member in need. We've offered this resource for years with our partners over at the Brookline Center. So when the COVID crisis hit, we had a structure in place to provide emergency assistance for the basics, food, rent, utilities, and other urgent needs like furniture or appliances or internet access. And as the economic impact has grown and spread, demand for safety net services has also grown. And we're incredibly grateful that the town and community have stepped up to support this important resource, which we expect will be needed for the long haul as things slowly come back. So if you or someone you know is facing hardship, please call 617-277-8107 or go online to brooklinecommunity.org backslash safety net. Thanks and stay safe. Now, we have a poetry reading from Brookline's own Poet Laureate, Tzvi Sessling. Hi, I'm Tzvi Sessling. For the past three years, I have been very fortunate to be the Poet Laureate of the town of Brookline. And during that time, I did a lot of activities within the town, having readings at the library, going into schools, and generally bringing poetry to the people of Brookline. I want to thank uh, Brookline is Strong for inviting me to do this video and I'm going to read from my book The Lynching of Leo Frank and I selected the poem called Oh the Boxcars for a Reason. When my mother uh, passed away I looked through her books and found a book by Nellie Sachs who in 1946 won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and she wrote a poem called Oh the Chimneys about the chimneys that the Nazis had at their death camps, and it inspired this particular pro poem, which I feel goes with what's going on in this country today. Oh the boxcars, filled with Jews like sheep shunted off to camps, filled with the smell of sweat, the smell of fear, the smell of death, filled with the dying, the soon to die, filled with grandparents, parents, children, all carrying what they had in one suitcase. All the boxcars filled with human sheep, the end of the tracks, more than a shearing. With little bleeding and quiet ending, a noisy ending, no one cares. All the boxcars, transports of death, trains of indignity, no way out. The end of the line is the end. And I can only say that I hope that our country settles down and once again, we have peace among all Americans, equality for all Americans, no racism, no anti-Semitism, and no more hate. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Navarro from Los Angeles, California. In early April, Rebecca Sanford of McLean Hospital in Belmont, Massachusetts and I co-wrote a brand new version of the song the late Eric Lowen and I co-wrote in 1984 called We Belong that was a big hit for Pat Benatar. And Rebecca's and my new version, we pay tribute to the healthcare workers of McLean Hospital for their dedication, strength, and courage in putting themselves on the line to fight COVID-19. I'd like to share that with you now.
There are times we feel so frightened There are times we feel alone In the darkness there is always A light ahead to lead you home Don't want to have you feeling This is something we can't do Our work is our commitment Spreading signs of hope to pull you through We belong to the light we belong to the thunder We belong to a spirit of strength As we lean on each other Whatever we deny or embrace Though our self are better We belong, we belong, we belong together It is not a sign of weakness when you don't know what to say. This is a historic moment testing us in every way. We're here to meet this challenge. It may be a wild ride. When it's dark, just look around you. You will find us right here by your side. We belong to the light. We belong to the thunder We belong to a spirit of strength As we lean on each other Whatever we deny or embrace Oh, us up a better We belong, we belong, we belong together Close your eyes and feel the hope now Close your eyes and feel it's true Clear your mind, we'll do our best To help each other make it through And every day we'll show you How much we really care Working hand in hand together So things are better everywhere We belong to the light we belong to the thunder We belong to a spirit of strength As we lean on each other Whatever we deny or embrace Oh, we're so far better We belong, we belong, we belong together Lean on me and we'll get through this together Keep the faith, Brookline. We've got another musical treat coming up next. The Brookline Community Band joins us now to perform water music. Thank you. 
Hey y'all, Jennifer Magnus coming to you live and in person, pretty close uh, to that, uh, from the safety of my home in Los Angeles, California. And we are here in support of a Brookline, of the Brookline essential workers. Um, we are Brookline strong, that's the point here. And we want, I wanna thank all of the essential workers, especially the folks um, at Brookline that are working so hard to keep us healthy and safe. Um, we are accepting donations on this YouTube live stream, and there'll be a link, um, I'm sure, in the feed uh, for the Safety Net Fund in support of brooklinestrong.org and all the Brookline work, essential workers. So this next tune here is uh, a little song about uh, being grateful for what you got. I know we've all uh, had to rethink a lot of things, and... Um, this one's called Eat the Lunch You Brought. There's Garrity. <laughs> Don't do it, baby. No, no. You 
Deloyan on guitar, y'all. He sounds great, doesn't he? Yeah. So I just wanted to let you know that we are here. If you have just tuned in, coming to you live streaming from uh, uh, YouTube live um, in support of Brookline Essential Workers. Um, there's a place in the feed, I'm sure, that you're going to be able to find a donation and uh, a donation link for uh, Brookline Strong. It's for Safety Net Fund for the Brookline Essential Workers um, who have been really severely affected, as many of us have, by the COVID-19 crisis. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter really, small, medium, large, any donation um, is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. I've got one more song I'm going to go ahead and do for you. Um, it's on one of my albums, an uh, album that came out, I believe, in 2016. <clears throat> Got a little old Grammy nomination for that record. That was a big, fat surprise for this young woman. <laughs> um, and uh, this is one of the songs off of that Grammy-nominated album, uh, and it's a love song. And um, this one's called When You Hold Me. I hope you dig it, and thanks so much for tuning in. Jennifer Magnus, live and in person from Los Angeles. Brookline Strong. Yeah. Here we go, When You Hold Me. And this is going to be Garrett DeLoyne again accompanying me on this. And singing. Backgrounds. When the lights go lower Everything feels right Been such a long, long day, my darling But you make it all right Yes, you do Ain't nobody knows Nobody knows Places we go when you hold me, when you hold me, yeah. darling, when you hold me, everything is all right, it's all right, all right now, right now, yeah. Riding high on this emotion, baby. Oh, yeah. In your arms, I'm home. Cause everyone knows. Everyone knows. I'm just a fool for you, baby. Cause you feel so true when you hold.
a true story. I know that uh, the Brookline essential workers are holding us all um, in their hearts and their minds, and um, I think we can uh, do the same. Please stay safe, everyone. Brookline Strong Safety Net Fund. Do what you can. Thank you so much. Geneva Magnus signing off from Los Angeles. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Pedro Gonzalez from Guatemala. I am a doctor. I love living at Brooklyn while on rotation at the Brigham and Beth Israel. I'm currently in Guatemala City and we are all dealing with COVID and seeking racial justice too. Hola, mi nombre es Pedro González de Guatemala. Soy un médico. A, a mí me encantó vivir en Brooklyn mientras estuve en mis rotaciones al, en el Brigham y también en Beth Israel. Aquí en Guatemala, en la ciudad de Guatemala, todos estamos luchando contra el COVID y también buscando justicia racial. Louise Alexandra Koopman with another original song. She wrote this piece after the tragic Boston Marathon bombings in 2013. Thank you, Brooklyn Strong, for giving me this opportunity to share a second song in this special session for this important cause. I will be singing this in Utrecht, but I wrote this song a while ago when living in Brooklyn. It actually was a Martin Luther King quote that I read in the hallways of the Lawrence School that inspired me to start writing this song. Then after the tragic Boston Marathon bombings in 2013, I incorporated the powerful words of another Martin, the young victim of that tragedy, to express his and my hope for the world. So today I will sing it for you ahead of its release to an instrumental track uh, with amazing musicians that are mentioned in the credits. It's called The Only Answer. Thank you and love to all. Prejudice and crime have long been outshined by love. A world where no one's to blame for not being the same. For we all believe there's nothing above but love. No matter what the color is, skin, whatever bed you're chosen to be born in, the love you fall in cannot be sin or held within, cause love is the only answer for hate and violence, the cure, an eye for an eye leaves us blind, let us try
Hello, I'm Rabbi Jim Morgan. I am the rabbi and chaplain for Center Communities of Brookline. I wanted to share with you a song that I play very often on Shabbat with our residents. It's called Eight Dodim Kala. The words are Eight Dodim Kala is uh, the time for lovers, my bride, come into my garden. The grapevines are blossoming and the pomegranates are budding. The music is from the Moroccan Jewish community, and the words are part of a piyut, a liturgical poem that was written in the 10th century by Chaim ben Sahel, who used the sixth chapter of Song of Songs as his starting point. So I hope you enjoy it.
The Feldman family joins us again now to read the poem, Because We Love, We Cry. Because we love, we cry. Because we love, we cry. Sometimes there is no sense to things, my child. Sometimes there is no answer to the questions why. Sometimes things beyond all understanding. Sometimes people die. When it hurts like this, my child, when we are scared, suffering, confused, even if we are not together, together, let us cry. Remember, there is so much love. Because we love, we cry. Sometimes the sadness takes away your breath. Sometimes the pain seems endless, deep. Sometimes you cannot find the sun. Sometimes you wish you were asleep. When it hurts like this, my child, <clears throat> When you are scared, suffering, confused, even if we are not together, together let us cry. Remember there is still so much love, because we love, we cry. Pray that it answers, child. Pray this wasn't so. There are impossible things, child, I cannot bear for you to know. When it hurts like this, my child, when you are scared, suffering, confused, even if we are not together, I am ever by your side. Yes, there's still so, so, so much love. Because we love, we cry. Hi, I'm State Senator Cindy Cream. I want to say thank you first to Brookline Strong for recognizing it, the importance of our essential workers and our first responders and giving me this opportunity to say, I am so personally grateful to all of you for the work that you do, for the fact that you push your lives at risk so that you can make things easier for us. To the Brookline firefighters, to the Brookline police, to the grocery workers, to the delivery people, to the letter carriers, to all of the first responders and so essential workers. Thank you, thank you. We so appreciate what you're doing. Thank you again. Hello, it's Martha again. Brookline Strong wanted to make a very specific expression of gratitude to our teachers, to our police, to our firefighters and EMTs, all of our first responders, to our spiritual leaders, and to all our volunteers, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you have done for us and continue to do for us. Thank you. Up next is Eliza Garrett and her father, Paul, coming to us from Ontario, Canada. Greetings from Brights Grove, Ontario, Canada. To all our friends and family in Brookline, Massachusetts, USA. Children get older 
This next clip I want to dedicate to seniors. I want to send love and prayers to all seniors at this time for comfort, for health, and for companionship, and to acknowledge how hard this has been on you in particular. My grandfather, Papa, passed away last summer before the pandemic, but I can imagine how hard it must be not to be seeing your loved ones not being able to hug your grandchildren or hold a spouse's hand, and for them not being able to see you. This is for you. Please know that even though you may not be physically with your loved ones right now, they are with you, and we're with you too. This is a song that my papa and I really used to enjoy together, and I hope you like it too. <laughs> Now we welcome celebrated author Anita Diamal sharing some of her written work. Like everyone else with a heart, I am unutterably grateful to the people who have been caring for COVID patients. The physicians, the nurses, the technicians, the custodians, transport and food service workers, receptionists, security guards, all of them. Especially nurses. I have a thing for nurses. My neighbor's partner has been in the hospital for more than 50 days with COVID much of it on a ventilator. Her main source of information was the phone calls from nurses who not only returned her calls, but sometimes took the initiative and phoned her to let her know what was happening. They were honest about the ups and downs. They took time. They answered her questions. She lived for those calls and shift after shift, they took care of her just as they took care of him. They were a comfort. Comfort is the mandate of nurses. It's actually part of their job description. I'm not sure comfort is a part of anyone else's job description. This pandemic has improved visibility and respect for nurses. They seem to be getting as much attention and praise as physicians, which is way out of the ordinary. Nurses are being called frontline heroes and warriors in the war against COVID. I guess all the military language is meant to elevate their status but I fear it overshadows their real special powers, which are tenderness, presence, stamina, and comfort. You don't stick to being a nurse in a hospital unless there's a special place in your heart that can be filled by long hours, terrible smells, three-dimensional exhaustion, and frightened patients. Media reports during the pandemic have documented the lives of nurses who work long shifts and then go home where they care for children or older parents before they can sleep, if they can even get to sleep. Some don't go home at all for fear of infecting others, and they collapse in hotels or sleep in the basement. Either way, it's lonely. I could say the same about physicians and respiratory techs and custodial staff, but I want to focus on nurses before the pandemic loosens its grip and we stop calling nurses heroes and return to taking them for granted. I think we expect self-sacrifice and endless patience from nurses, in part because most of them are women. Nursing is still 90% female. 
Oh, and by the way, a lot of this goes for teachers, too, although they're not enjoying the four-star hero treatment quite as much. They are getting credit for doing a very difficult job that requires patience, skills, and long hours and doesn't usually get much credit. Women make up 77% of elementary school teachers and 64% of high school teachers. And that profession is so poorly paid that teachers in some communities qualify for food stamps. I am hoping that this is an inflection point so that the essential work of comfort and nurture is elevated to the position of honor that it deserves. I also hope that this marks a turning point that will change the police pledge to serve and protect from cynical camouflage to enforceable policy. I know it's a lot to hope for, but when I think about what nurses do day in, day out, week after week, I find reason to hope. Hi, my name's Laura. I'm a nurse at BC Children's Hospital here in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm just making this video to send you support and solidarity as a frontline healthcare worker. All the best from up north. Hi, this is Harvey Bravman from BrooklineHub.com and ADW Video Productions. And uh, just wanted to say shout out to Martha Huntley and the whole Brookline Strong team. You guys, this is such an incredible event and you're doing just an amazing service for our community at a time where we need it the most. Um, it's really important for Brookline to stay strong right now. And uh, when the show is over, what I want everyone to do is to go to brooklinehub.com and watch the 10th Brookline Youth Awards because you're gonna see 84 of the most amazing young people that are gonna make you so proud and they're gonna make you feel even stronger than you do right now. Um, these young people, some of them have faced challenges and adversities and come out of it um, just achieving such incredible things. So go to brooklinehub.com. You'll also be able to get uh, Brookline Facing Civil Rights about African American uh, residents of Brookline, also Soul Witness. Brookline residents who survived the Holocaust gave their testimonies 30 years ago. They ended up at the Brookline Health Department for 30 years, and now they're available in the film, and 30% of that goes to the Combined Jewish Philanthropies uh, Coronavirus Emergency Fund. So do all of those things, and please keep in mind that while we're strong today, there are Brookline residents that have to be strong every day. We're gonna face some difficult challenges. Let's just make sure that our, our community is judged by our capacity to love all of our residents, especially our young people and our seniors. Love you all, Brookline strong. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, the whole team. I'm out. Now we have Brookline historian Ken Liss learn more about the name change of Devotion School and about civil rights activist Florida Ruffin Ridley. My name is Ken Liss. I've been a resident of Brookline since 1996 and the volunteer head of the Brookline Historical Society since 2009. In my day job, I'm a librarian, the head of instruction at the Boston University Libraries. I love doing historical research, uncovering and sharing stories from the past, especially stories that may not have been told before. Sometimes that's driven just by curiosity and the love of stories. After all, who doesn't love a good story? But stories of the past are more than just good stories. They help us understand the present and prepare for the future too. And digging into stories, past or present, often leads us to places and people and lessons that we may not have expected to find. 
That is something I try to convey to students I work with at BU. Questions lead to research, yes, but research often leads to more questions, and those questions may lead you to places you may not have expected to go. Be curious, be open, don't be afraid to get lost because you never know what you will find. When I was asked to contribute to Brookline Strong, there were many stories I could think of, but there was one that stood out. It started with a question, led in unexpected directions, contributed to change in our town, and continues in new and unanticipated ways today. Back in 2012, the Brooklyn Commission for the Arts honored a group of grant recipients in a ceremony at Hunnaman Hall in the Public Library. Among them was the Roland Hayes Project, which celebrates the legacy of the pioneering African-American concert singer who lived in Brookline from 1925 until his death in 1977. I had to leave before the Hayes Project was recognized, but I heard later that Hayes was said to be the first African-American to purchase property in Brookline. I wondered, is that true? Many people, places, and events are said to be the first this or the oldest that, but the facts are often not that clear. There are doubters and disputants, caveats and qualifiers, questions and counterclaims. Now, it doesn't really matter whether Roland Hayes was the first, the third, the eighth, or the 80th African-American to purchase property in Brookline. His legacy is secure, thanks to the dedication of the Hayes Project and continuing efforts in Brookline to celebrate his talent and his musical and social struggles and accomplishments. But my skepticism about historical firsts and my love of research led me to look deeper. And as is often the case, my digging turned up much more than the answer to a single question. I went through census records, town directories, property maps, and newspaper archives. I encountered other African-American residents from Brookline's past. And I opened a window, if only a crack, into ways of learning more about an aspect of Brookline's history that is often overlooked. I went back to 1924, the year before Roland Hayes purchased a home at 58 Allerton Street and moved to Brookline. I found Samuel A. Davis of 39 Marion Street, one of six African-American homeowners listed in the 1930 census, already there in 1924, before Roland Hayes. In fact, directories, maps, and deeds show Davis and his wife Mary at the Marion Street home as early as 1913 and at his adjacent business, the Coolidge Corner Garage, as early as 1907, nearly two decades before Hayes purchased his Brookline home. Davis is intriguing. Neither well-known nor well-documented, he was an African-American homeowner and the proprietor of an auto garage at a time when very few African-Americans owned homes or businesses in Brookline. His father, Samuel P. Davis, born enslaved in North Carolina, lived with the family in Brookline for a time. But Samuel and Mary Davis were not the first African-Americans to own property in Brookline either. Further research led me to a woman I had never heard of, but whose name, I'm sure, most of you now know. This is Florida Ruffin Ridley. Yes, her name was pronounced Florida, not Florida. In 1896, she and her husband Ulysses, a Boston tailor, purchased this house, still standing today, at 131 Kent Street, adjacent to the railroad tracks, now the D branch of the MBTA Green Line. Florida Ruffin Ridley was a member of a prominent African American family in Boston. Her father, George Lewis Ruffin, was the first black graduate of Harvard Law School and served as a judge and a member of both the Massachusetts Legislature and the Boston Common Council. Her mother, Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin, was a writer, editor, and organizer who became especially active on behalf of women's rights, education, and the advancement of African Americans after the death of her husband in 1886. Florida Ruffin Ridley followed in her parents' footsteps as an activist and a pioneer. She was educated at Boston Teachers College and Boston University and was the second African-American woman to teach in the Boston public schools. She was a co-founder with her mother and others of the Women's Era Club in Boston, a precursor to the National Association of Colored Women. She was a major contributor to the club's journal, Women's Era, and other publications. In Brookline, she was an active member of the Equal Suffrage Association and a co-founder of the Second Unitarian Church on Sewell Avenue. In September 2018, the Historical Society featured a poster of Ridley, along with those of other notable figures from Brookline's past, at the annual Brookline Day celebration at Lars Anderson Park. 
Town meeting had voted four months earlier to change the name of the Edward Devotion School in Coolidge Corner, removing the name of the colonial-era slaveholder who had left money to the town back in 1744. Also present at Brookline Day that September was a group gathering ideas for a new person after whom the school, temporarily designated the Coolidge Corner School, could be named. One of the members of that group saw our Ridley poster, asked excitedly if she could bring it to her group's table, and thus brought Florida Ruffin Ridley into contention as a person for whom the school could be named. The rest, as they say, is history. After a year-long process, town meeting in November 2019 voted overwhelmingly to change the name of the school to the Florida Ruffin Ridley School. That could be the end of this story. But as I have learned, and as I help others understand, research and the stories it leads to never really ends. With the official renaming of the Florida Ruffin Ridley School scheduled for next fall, I was asked for help in finding descendants of the Ridley family who might participate in the dedication and events surrounding it. Florida and Ulysses Ridley had two children who survived into adulthood, neither of whom had children of their own. None of Florida's siblings had children, so there are no descendants of Florida Ruffin Ridley or her parents. But my curiosity got the better of me, and over the past few months, I have developed an extensive family tree of the Ridley, Ruffin, and St. Pierre families. And what a tree it is. Here are some of the people I found. In 1896, C. Stanley Ruffin, Florida Ridley's younger brother, was serving, as had his father, on the Boston Common Council, the predecessor of today's city council. When African Methodist Episcopal Bishop Benjamin Arnett of Ohio visited Boston and was denied a room in two inns because of the color of his skin, Ruffin introduced a resolution condemning the inn owners. Gentlemen, he said, let there be a declaration from us tonight which cannot be misunderstood by the citizens of this city, state, and country, that here in Boston the rights of the humblest citizen must be respected or the penalty for not respecting them paid. The resolution was passed unanimously. Later that year, Ruffin was one of two black alternates in the Massachusetts delegation sent to the Republican National Convention in St. Louis. They were initially going to be denied the right to stay with the rest of the delegates in the Southern Hotel in that city. Only when the full Massachusetts delegation threatened to take their business elsewhere did the hotel relent. Edwin F. Kenswell was Florida Ruffin Ridley's first cousin, the son of her aunt, Maria Louisa Ruffin Kenswell. In 1943, while serving as the only African-American in the Missouri legislature, representing part of St. Louis, he introduced a bill outlawing discrimination in public places. The law is intended to secure equal accommodations for the Negro citizens of Missouri, Kenswell told the legislature. If we call our system of government and life a democracy, it should be a real democracy, and all persons should have equal privileges in public places and the same access to public facilities. His bill was killed in committee. Dorothy Bolding Ferraby was a granddaughter of Florida Ridley's aunt Lillian Ruffin Page. She was born and raised in Virginia, but when her mother became ill, she came to live with a great aunt in Boston. She graduated from Simmons College and Tufts Medical School and became an obstetrician. Rejected for internships at Boston's white hospitals, she moved to Washington, D.C., where she had a private practice and taught obstetrics at Howard University. During the Depression, she served as medical director of the Mississippi Health Project, which brought primary medical care to the rural black population of that state. An active member of the National Council of Negro Women, she succeeded the organization's founder, Mary McLeod Bethune, as president in 1949. Under her leadership, the organization worked to fight discrimination against minorities in housing, health care, education, and the armed forces. Edwin B. Jourdain Jr. was descended from the sister of Florida Ridley's paternal grandmother. That made them second cousins once removed, for those of you who like to keep track of such things. He grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts, graduated from Harvard Business School, was a journalist and editor for several black newspapers in Chicago, and in 1931 became the first black alderman in Evanston, Illinois. Temporarily unseated the following year, he got back on the ballot with the help of several Northwestern University professors and two stars of the Northwestern football team who fought through a crowd to get his nomination papers in. He remained an alderman until 1945 and, according to the Chicago Tribune, organized sit-ins and helped integrate the city's beaches and theaters. 
Later, as Illinois' first black assistant school superintendent, he fought for school desegregation and equal pay for black teachers. None of these people have a direct connection to Brookline. Some of them may never have even met Florida Ruffin Ridley. So what lessons relevant to today and to this time of upheaval can we, in Brookline, learn from these expeditions up, down, and sideways through the Ruffin Ridley family tree? I don't know that I can really answer that question, but I've been musing over it ever since I was asked to contribute something to Brookline Strong. So here is a little bit of what I think. People become advocates and activists for social justice in many different ways and for many different reasons. We're seeing plenty of that these days in Brookline, around the country, and around the world. We are not all motivated by the same causes, may not believe in the same solutions, and do not necessarily act on them in the same way. But so many of us are acting because we see a need for change. Florida Ruffin Ridley and so many members of her extended family saw a need for change, and over generations fought for change in their own times and in their own ways. And that is not an accident. It's an attitude, a belief, a spirit that clearly was nurtured and grew across time and space. So remember, as we work together today for causes so important to us, to the nation and to the world, we are also nurturing a wider sense of social justice and the importance of fighting for it in our families and in our wider community. Thank you and be safe and well. Link 20 is a global social movement led by a network of young activists with and without disabilities who care about social justice and inclusion for all. The Rutterman Family Foundation believes that inclusion and understanding of all people is essential to a fair and flourishing community. Working with Yachad, the National Jewish Council for Disabilities, we're dedicated to addressing the needs of all Jewish individuals with disabilities and ensuring their inclusion in every aspect of Jewish life. The Yachad Group is based at 384 Harvard Street and loves being part of the Brookline community. thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath the most sacred of times. Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, set her down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands, reach out your heart. Reach out your words, reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world you love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. Steps to Success promotes equity for students from low-income families in Brookline in order to help them maximize their life choices. Learn more at StepsToSuccessBrookline.org. My name is Joshua C. Cohen, and I'm going to play for you an original melody that is based off Jewish text of a prayer called Ose Shalom, which is really just about bringing down the peace for all of us to share and enjoy. So here's my song for all of you. Oh uh -huh. 
Abrams joins us now with an original song. It's called We'll Get Through This, and it might be just what you need to hear. Hi, Brookline. This song is We'll Get Through This. It's an appreciation song, and it's set to the melody Dainu, which is also a song of gratitude. And it's a sing-along, so I hope you'll, you know, sing along. We will get through all this madness. All this illness, loss, and sadness, we will get through all this madness, we'll get through. We'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, yes, we will get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, yes, we will. Let us help our friends and neighbors. Acts of kindness, doing favors. Lots of love in all our labors will get through. Thanks to all our town employees for your signs all over Brookline. Caring for our health and safety will get through. Everybody will get through this. We'll get through this. We'll get through this, we'll get through this, yes, we will get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, we'll get through this, yes, we will. We'll get through this, Brookline. Singer-songwriter Peter Himmelman is up next. Hello, Brookline. Brookline Strong. Got a couple songs I want to play for you. As the sun goes down here in New York, the sky is purple, the clouds are a little blue, but you can't see that. You have to trust me. 
I'm gonna make you proud Proud enough to never have to lie And if I make you smile Would you leave just a trace of sadness in your eyes I don't need to think it over A night like this wasn't born to last too long You get one shot at love and then it's gone Shot at love and then it's gone. I'm gonna make you sing till the words will shoot like lightning from your dreams. And you and I both know that easy street ain't never what it seems. I not put away your compass. Baby, you'll ride where you belong You get one shot at love and then it's gone One shot at love and then it's gone One shot at love and then it's gone, gone, gone One shot at love and then it's gone I'm gonna make you fly Transcending like the dawn above the mist We were born into the sky Innocent like the day that heaven kissed I don't take all this for granted We're as weak as we are strong You get one shot at love and then it's gone One shot at love and then it's gone One shot at love and then it's gone, gone, gone One shot at love and then it's gone Just fades out here, maybe you can imagine like a trumpet solo or something but As far as I know, there's no trumpet player in here. This next one is a song. It's called All These Impermanent Things. Um, pretty much just describes all the things that are not that important. I think they may even outweigh the things that are important by a thousand to one. But philosophically speaking, maybe you want to make more and more things in your life important. It's up to you. I just thought of that now. All these impermanent things Oh, how they fool me Dominate and rule me They keep me waiting here forever All these impermanent things The beauty's never aging But their worthlessness and raging You know we always stand alone when we're together Why keep hanging on Never stay, yeah. Things that just keep stringing us along from day to day. All these impermanent things, present yet elusive, passive yet abusive, tearing off the heart in another side. These impermanent things Would have born in all directions Like second hand reflections And they're leading us to subtle shades of vice Why keep hanging on 
to things that never stay. Yeah, things that just keep stringing us along from day to day. Permanent things that trying to convince me, baptize my soul and rinse me, purge my mind of honesty and fight. All these impermanent things, well, they all add up to zero and make believe that they're my heroes. Then they fill my mind with doubt and false desires. And why keep hanging on to things that never stay? Things that just keep stringing us along from day to day. If I take out a pick, I thought maybe I could play like a little funk riff. Brookline Strong, that's what I'm talking about. Brookline Strong, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Talking about Brookline Strong. That's all I got to share. Thank you. If you've ever wondered how artists like Peter get their start, take a look at these young performers. Here are Reeve and Rian Vaidya. <laughs> Thanks for watching and 
stay safe. And don't forget to wear a mask. Wonder what Brookline teens are up to during this pandemic? Well, some of them are recreating MTV. Check this out from the Brookline Teen Center. Stay put for you have clicked your way to something zesty, something never before seen in the eyes of any Brookliner, Bostonian, or anywhere else in Massachusetts, this fine state of ours. Exquisitely crafted by Brookline artists, these performances are not only meant to entertain and feed the soul, but a way to say thank you to those essential frontline workers. So whether you're mulling over ceasing the medical mayhem, packing bags at the grocery store, stocking shelves, or taking rubbish off the streets with big trucks, whatever you do to be an essential worker, we, the community of the good people of Brookline, salute you. So as a gift from our hearts to your ears, please sit back and enjoy Brookline Strong, the musical performance. Hi, I'm David Rothberg. I'm Annie Brody. I wrote um, this song called There's a Light at the End of the Tunnel because um, it's important to, uh, even when things seem hopeless, to find hope and to see that even if you don't see the way out of where you are, a way out will emerge. When you feel like the world has turned against you Thank you. 
Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed these talented acts. If you feel so compelled, a donation of any amount is appreciated to support our community. I've been your host, Sophie Morgenstern, and here are a few final words from Martha. Hello again. We hope you enjoyed the Heartbeat Sessions. Thank you so much for being here with us, and thank you to everyone that participated and made this event possible. If you have an expression of gratitude that you'd like to share, please go to brooklinestrong.org and post on our social media. I want to thank Big for hosting us tonight. Thank you so much. And thank you to our essential workers. Where would we be without you? Social and racial justice workers, you are teaching us and you are changing the world. Thank you for donations to the Safety Net Fund at brooklinestrong.org. We leave you with an exquisite performance by Boston Ballet soloist Erlan Silva. He's dancing on the sidewalk in front of his friend's Brookline home. His grace is going to carry you away. Take good care, everyone.